When it comes to keeping customer comebacks and warranty returns in check, counter professionals are on the front lines. Of course, there'll be times, rare as they are, when a part is defective right out of the box. But if you've been in this business for a while, you've probably encountered more than your fair share of customers who make mistakes during the installation process and then try to tell you that the new part you just sold them is defective. Hub bearing removal and installation, for example, is a process that requires strict adherence to the service information, particularly the torque specifications. Deviating from the recommended procedures can leave the hub assembly vulnerable to premature failure and create an unsafe situation for the driver and passengers. It also can lead to unnecessary returns. Let's go over a few do's and don'ts that your customers should be aware of when installing a new hub assembly. The first item, and maybe the most important one, is that they always should look up the recommended torque specifications for tightening the axle nut. Late model vehicles have greater braking and cornering capabilities, they're more efficient, and suspensions are lighter. Because of this, the torque specifications for wheel bearings are much more exact now than they were in the past. Too little or too much torque on the axle nut changes the geometry or the angle of pressure for the bearings inside the hub. Even a slight variance can mean the difference between long bearing life or a failure in a few thousand miles. Also, do clean it and inspect the axle shaft prior to installing a new hub assembly. Use a fine file, wire brush, emery cloth, or honing stone as appropriate to remove any debris, nicks, or burrs. Now let's talk about a couple don'ts. While it might seem easier to use an impact wrench, it's not recommended for installation or removal of a wheel bearing. During removal, an impact wrench can damage the axle nut threads and shock the CV joints. It also can create a false sense of security when adjusting a nut or bolt, which may be under or over torqued. This can leave a hub assembly susceptible to failure. Finally, don't use any lubricants on the threads or the washers. This can change the torque readings. In addition to being aware of the proper installation procedures, it's important for counter pros to stay on top of manufacturer specific issues that could lead to unnecessary returns. For example, in a tech bulletin, SKF points out that it's normal to feel a roughness or grittiness when rotating the two halves of a new SKF hub assembly by hand. These hub units should not be returned as suspected defective parts. The reason an SKF hub bearing might be hard to rotate out of the box is because the company uses premium grease in many of its hub bearings. Some of the performance enhancing additives in this grease are in the form of soft crystalline structures when the grease is new. Even though the bearing may feel rough when it's initially rotated by hand, after rotating on the vehicle for a few minutes, the soft crystalline structures in the grease will break down into finer structures and the bearing will rotate smoothly. SKF notes that the additives in its grease are critical to the optimum performance and lifespan of its wheel bearings, and many of the company's OEM customers require this type of grease to be used. When it comes to minimizing customer comebacks and returns, knowledge is definitely power, especially when you're dealing with hub bearings. I'm Josh Cable. Thanks for watching.